All right, uh, timer set. Got some apples for the kids. Facebook, all that kind of stuff out of the way. Lame. Took a music break to check Facebook. Um, yeah, so from where we were, I don't know how well that uh, wind bit is coming coming through now. Uh, it doesn't sound very strong through my headphones. I can hear the hoots and a couple crickets or chirps or something. Okay, uh, which was kind of where I was going to go here. It may be time to start adding reverb which, of course, I've got like 8,000 of them hooked up to things in my uh, default deal. Um, now, the way I run reverb, let me just kind of loop this portion right here. All right, so there's a reverb. Uh, nothing should be on right now. All right, so this would be room reverb. Um, going to wait for the loop thing to actually come on. There we go. And what I'll do is I'll dial this knob until I can actually recognize a difference. Which, to my ear, is right there. And being that I'm hard of hearing, I have to kind of compensate for that and understand that everybody else probably already recognized it a few dB before I did, so I just dial it back a little bit more. Just basically so I don't oversaturate things with reverb, as I'm about to do. All right, so I can hear it there. Versus. So I'll just dial it back just a pinch and then combine the two. And you got a kind of a nice, a nice sound there. And basically do the same thing on the next one. Oops. Oops, no. Are we even using that channel anymore? We are not. Goodbye. Gotta keep things simplified. Okay, so on this one... It's going to be pretty much the same deal, but I'm not going to set them identically. You know, just set them close. Kind of lazy. And then combining the two. Unfortunately, this sample already tends to ring out. Whether you like it or not. Yeah, dial it back, turn that one on, bring the next one on. And then dial it back once you recognize it. And then with the violins, it may need a little more than that. All right, we got cello and cello copy. Uh, this is the staccato deal, not like that. And we'll do the same thing with the cello. I basically uh, don't want to put too much on it. You know the rule about putting uh, too much reverb on lower frequency instruments. I think the rule is that it's bad. Alright, so I'm turning that one off. Bring this one up until I can hear it. Which is right there. And bring it down. Turn the other one back on. We should have something that sounds like a room. Should. And I do hear my leaves rustling. It's just enough for that ambiance that I was talking about. 
Now for our other mixing deal, I'm gonna put a high pass on this thing. Also gonna take the time to rename it. Yeah, Toy Pino. All right, you can go away. I basically will put a high pass on just about everything. You know, it just doesn't need anything if it's going to be a, a middle range instrument. If it's in the low, uh, low bit there, it just it doesn't need it. So, yeah, that ought to be fine. Now, as far as the cello is concerned, it'll get one, but it'll get one much lower. And basically the same, the same deal could be applied to this. All right, let's turn it off real quick. That's no high pass. And then just dial it in until you hear it thin out a little bit which that's pretty thin right there. <laughs> that's over, over emphasizing what I'm talking about. And then just dial it back to make it more moderate. Another way you could go about this, this would almost be an intelligent way of doing it. Ask your friend Google uh, for frequency ranges of instruments like so. And you'll see that somebody has thought about this before. And there he is, cello. The lowest frequency is somewhere there around 70 hertz, maybe? 75, I don't know, 70. So basically anything lower than 70 uh, is recording after effects. But you also have to account for the, uh, here I go pointing at the screen again, right? Um, you have to account for the slope of the filter, you know, so it, it's not an immediate drop off here at the 89.6. It's a, it's a slope away from 89.6. So you want it to be a little bit higher than your lowest potential frequency coming from the instrument. So, you know, yeah, 90, that's probably fine. You know, that's a reasonable place if you want to be real scientific about it. That, that's, a, that's a reasonable way to do it. Wow. Look at that. Now for the piano, the piano piano, I'm not going to put a high pass on it. You know, it, I guess if I were to, I'd probably drop it around 40 hertz. Or in such a way that anything lower than 40 hertz is getting rolled off. So about 55, you know, something to keep the rumble out of the music. Yeah, that sounded intelligent. We'll go with that. Yeah. All right, so this is side chain bus. That's important to know. That's what's putting the clamp down on our uh, wind sound. Okay, so what are we going to do now? That's a good question. I'm so tickled with what I have that I'm afraid to touch it again for fear of screwing it up. Alright, so where does this end? Ends up landing on a D. Look at that. Which is funny because that's where it starts. Almost like you planned that, Anthony. Uh, and there's a word for that, too. Yeah, let's look at this. Wow, we've got Google here, and we're learning things. Uh, musical modes. That's what we want. All right, so, basically, when you write a piece of music on a major scale, let's just say it's a major scale, write... Here, what would be your... Yeah, yeah, that would be your major scale. And then if you were to uh, write uh, a melody like this particular one, 
it both starts and ends on a D, but it stays within the same, uh, uh, what do you call this thing? Uh, scale, same key. What you have is uh, a different mode of the key that you are playing. So in our situation, what we're doing is uh, playing the D Dorian, Dorian, yeah, you know, uh, mode. Yeah, so it's real, real fancy stuff that we're learning here. It's uh, really cool. And if you read this, it says it's very similar to the modern natural minor minor scale. Uh, the only difference being that the uh, sixth scale number is a major six rather than a minor six. How about that? Just fantastic little bits of knowledge you get by watching these videos. I apologize. Um, so yeah, this is a little bit of D Dorian for you. Um, now, what else do we really want to do? Well, this is, um, what I was saying was this ends on D. So if we wanted to create more music after this pass, which probably wouldn't be a bad idea, it's ending on D. So maybe we could get it back into C where it belongs. Something like that. That keeps up with the happy uh, feeling that we're looking for, right? So, yeah. What I'm going to do is just kind of do the same thing I did last time around and see what happy things might happen here. Alright, so that's my D. And I do need that click back. Thank you very much. <laughs> Trust me. We don't want to try this without a click. Ooh, nasty. Okay, so that wasn't such a great idea. Kinda was an okay idea. It wasn't a hard idea. <laughs> Again, my inability to Whoa, stop, Anthony. You're being an idiot again. Come on, do what I'm asking you to do. Is that what I'm thinking? Perfect. Almost like you intended to do that the first time. But of course you didn't do that the first time. Alright, so like that maybe. And hearing it one more time, I apologize. No wait, no I don't. Mm. That probably belongs oops. Right there. All right, so what I'm going to do here, for lack of a better way of putting it, I'm going to build a chorus part.
suite. And at that point, we should be able to bring in our melody that we had. Oh, this might actually work. I, I'm going to be tickled if this works. I'm already tickled. You knew that. Not completely tickled, but just mostly tickled. How about that? How long is this thing? This starts on C again. Good. And... Some of that's not going to work. Hmm, how am I going to do this? We've got to space it out somehow, some way. I hate to reach for the violin again, but I'm going to, in a way. I'm going to create a new instrument, uh, go back to my refills, Miroslav, and hope that it opens, solo strings, violin, and you. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering about. What happens if we do that? And we'll just mute you for the time being. Let's make sure you fall in the range of the instrument. Good. not do that. Uh, let's see, how are we doing on time? We're just testing things here. Uh, almost out. Alright, uh, what happens if we lower all of this by an octave? Does that clean it up enough that we can run that melody over the top of it? Which, of course, gives me the other idea. Yeah, and there would be that thing that I was complaining about, or making note of before, that uh, this is four bars, right? One, two, three, four. And if I remember correctly, this turned out to be 14 total. So... Yeah, I kind of screwed myself there. Well, not literally. Um, let's see. Why am I having a hard time with this? This is bar number 41. Well, sure enough, that's where the next one starts. That's because this is 8. That means this finishes... two bars ahead of schedule. Hmm. I wonder if I need to extend this. Hey, look, we're out of time.
Yeah, this, this melody needs to be extended by two bars so that that C is the last one rather than this one. Yeah, I don't know how to do that without just trying to goof off and get something that sounds better. Um, Mm-hmm. But I'm so happy with what I have, I don't want to screw it up by trying to introduce something new. And we're out of time, Anthony. It's time to stop this video. Okay, um... Yeah, I, I think I might get up and leave it for a day or two and come back, uh, just because I feel like I'm maybe overdoing things here. Um, but yeah, we've certainly made some progress from earlier today, that's for sure. Uh, as always, comments, uh, questions, inquiries, please go check out the book if you haven't, uh, or if you, um, uh, yeah, just go check out the book. Anyway, uh, be good, guys, and we will see you next time around.